On this week's GTA 5 O'Clock, character specials and portable playlists, more about GTA Online, what will be the game's biggest heist? Oh, and you'll want to stick around to the end of the episode. It's the only GTA 5 show that matters. It's this week's GTA 5 O'Clock. Hi, welcome to this week's GTA 5 O'Clock. I'm Tim Weaver. I'm here with Dan Dawkins. Hello, Dan. Hello there. So, a bit of a shorter episode this week, uh, and we'll tell you why at the end. Dan, let's crack on right away and talk about character specials and colouring. Not food colouring. Yeah, not food colouring. Uh, what we've, no- what we've noticed, and in fact, to be fair, very many of you have noticed and picked up on as a trend or theme, is that in a number of the screenshots Rockstar have released, there's like a coloured hue around certain characters when they're performing certain activities. Mm. Now, what we know is each character has a confirmed special ability. For example, Michael almost enters a degree of like matrix time, allowing him to target in slow motion. Franklin has a similar ability when he's driving so that, you know, Franklin's reactions will be like normal speed, but everything in the world slows down so he can like, you know, effectively act if he's got increased reactions. Now, what we've noticed from Rockstar's official screens is that a different tint appears if you look at the Michael screens, and Tim will pull through which ones we're talking about now, yeah. you know, there's a bluish tint. Uh, you look at the Franklin screens where we think he's activating a special ability, there's a greenish tint. And like you noticed, Tim, that ties in with the character wheel. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I, to, to be honest, again, a big shout out to the community for this because this is something that you've, you've, you've all picked up on. Uh, Franklin's tint green matches the green uh, of the character select in the wheel. Uh, Michael's blue matches his character select colour and although none of the screenshots uh, seem to show Trevor activating his special we assume given that pattern that his tint will be a sort of yellowy sandy colour um, if you want to check out the screenshots they should be on screen now uh, but Franklin's are when he's sort of performing a drive-by on a bike with 83 written on it and also when he's uh, driving a car probably at three figures past the wind farm we all know so well now. Michael's uh, two sort of fairly uh, fairly similar poses, uh, sort of facing off right. One's the sun sort of winking below his gun uh, in the batch of shots that were released last week. The other is him with the guy that they, they kidnap, take back, or uh, whatever they yeah, do. Yeah, the FIB building. From the FIB yeah. um, building. And, he, and Michael's sort of hanging on a harness way above the city. Yeah, that looks correct. And again, just to clarify, uh, uh, quite a few episodes ago uh, where we speculated that we saw a screenshot with like kind of like uh, almost like neon trails coming out the back of a car. And I said at the time that could that be an Instagram style post-processing effect added to uh, a screenshot you've taken of the screen yourself? Mm-hmm. Now, to be, to be clear, like it could be that screen was in fact of a special ability, but, I, you know, I think it's confirmed if not certain that uh, you will be able to take pictures of the things you were doing within the game. And in fact, when we spoke to uh, Imran from Rockstar North, he was saying effectively you can take selfies. Yeah. So you can take pictures of yourself with your cars and your vehicles. So the ability to take pictures and share them online will be a key fact in GTA 5. It's also highly likely that Rockstar will will include some sort of ranking system for those photographs. Otherwise, you just end up with a place with that's a dumping ground for photographs and what better way to get ranked higher than to treat your your photographs in an Instagram style by you know you know using yeah. colouring and framing it differently and tints and all that sort of stuff. That's exactly it. Rockstar live in the world we live in, you know, beyond doubt. But I mean they're not like a developer who, you know, is two years behind the times. They're really on the pulse and they will go, hey people are using this thing. How can we replicate it in our game? One other thing I noticed, Dan, and it could be just a throwaway uh, thing, it could be that Rockstar didn't mean this at all, but I kind of think they probably did, is that in the health body armour specials bar beneath the map, that's also coloured green, blue and yellow. Uh, Just a little throwaway observation. Uh, I don't know whether it means anything, but anyway, we'll move on. Uh, Next, Dan, let's talk about characters. We talked last week about... Um, we confirmed as many names of real actors as we could, and we came up with the theory that if they look like the, uh, if these actors look like the in-game characters, they probably yeah, are. We're, we're through the looking glass here, people. <laughs> yeah, that's the level of analysis you get here. That if somebody looks like their in-game actor, we're saying it is them. But uh, lot, it's holding up. Yeah, so far. A, a, a lot of talk this week, uh, and in fairness, over 
over the last couple of months really about how uh, Jimmy is the actor Danny Tamborelli, most famous Dan, as I'm sure you're aware, for uh, Nickelodeon series The Adventures of Pete and Peach, which I'm pretty positive you would have watched I, in the I mid '90s. Love that show. Um, if you guys out there want to go and check out um, a video on YouTube that was actually sent into us by uh, the original Bandeo, thank you for that. Uh, of um, what's his name, Danny Tamborelli, yeah. talking uh, to some guy. I don't know who the guy is, but at the twentieth reunion of uh, the Adventures of Pete and Pete. Go and check that video out on YouTube. That is Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, he just, he just sim- on the simple crudest level, he looks like him. Yeah. So again, it passes that test. Essentially, he sounds the same. So he's got that kind of twenty-year-old man with the thousand-year-old cigarette voice. That's right. He's like, ah, he's like twenty-one, but he sounds like he's smoked seven thousand cigarettes a day for the past five years. It's like the Laramie man, you know, auditioning for the Muppets or something. Like really, <laughs> so we we think it's him. Um, and you know, again, that's appeared on IMDb, which is in itself no proof or factual indicator of who's playing who. But I think you can look at certain names that IMDb have listed because it's possible to like input your own IMDb entries. Yeah. It's not entirely properly verified. So, um, but there are people on there who we think are probably pretty good ties for their existing uh, in-game actors. Another one is Caroline Strong, mm. and this has been rumored for quite a while. We're just lifting it back to the surface again. Who's rumored to be the voice of Amanda, Michael's wife? Now again, applying our ultra scientific approach of <laughs> does she look like Amanda? Um, Looking at various photos on Google Image and you know what what have you, the answer is yes. She possesses the requisite boxiness of face yep. to be Amanda. Now that that's slightly harsh, and I'm sure that these photos aren't very flattering. But yeah, you could see the tie up with it. Um, and again, she what the, all these characters have got really and fits the profile is that Rockstar have said they're moving away from using big Hollywood talent. I think that, that there's two sides to it. One is that. You know, the volume of work required in a big production AAA game like this could take a year of an actor's time yeah. with constant revisions, hundreds of lines of dialogue. You think about the flexibility of a Hollywood actor's schedule, twin to their you know, inevitably huge demands fees. Demands and stuff, yeah. Fees and demands. It's just not a sensible approach for Rockstar, I think, to work that way, and they've effectively said that. So we're going to see more kind of professional actors, but not super profile actors, mm. you know. And, it, it, you know, Rockstar, if anything, will do the work of driving them into a more forthright place. And um, it's I wouldn't at the same time rule out Hollywood star cameos in GTA V, but I would expect them to be literally cameos, as yeah. in, you know, people who come in and out for a mission, a scene. You're going back to your GTA Vice City stories, you know, protect Phil Collins Phil in Collins, the nightclub. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sort of stuff, I don't see that going away. And they've created a legacy for that. They've created, you know, the idea of, you know, you go to a club, Look, it's Ricky Gervais doing a stand-up mm. gig. You know, stuff like that isn't going to go away. And I, I would bet my bottom dollar that there's going to be something celebrity-wise in GTA. You're going to go, woo, mm. amazing. They just buried that away. Okay, so let's move on to some questions, Dan. Jack Cowie on our Twitter uh, got in touch and said, you've talked about portable music. Um, do you think you'll be able to make your own playlists from in-game music? Yes. Uh, basically, we talked about this and in the, the previous next show. Oh, no, 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 yeah. Yeah. And yes. Um, yeah, because again, like we just said, Rockstar moved with the times. They're aware of what a modern day smartphone can do, as can tablets, etc., etc. There will be radio stations in the car that work in a traditional fashion, spanning the usual mix of genres across time periods, and all the tracks would be hand curated and almost invariably really cool and right on and work brilliantly because that's what Rockstar do. Mm. But I think. I would think they would want to move with the times and the element of letting you cherry pick your favourite tracks, particularly if you're a smartphone and if you're on the move. Mm. So like we talked about the earbuds or earphones that Michael's using when he sat on his sun lounger and you know how that can indicate an ability to listen to music anyway. The truth is that like any old smartphone now acts as a speaker on the move. And you always see it when your kid's walking along playing some rude music like, yeah, stay away from me, I'm a badass, and listening to loud music on the bus. Like, you know, that kind of ability surely will exist within GTA. So I'm just going to say I expect there to be something along that line. Okay. Daedra Lord one says, uh, do you guys think there will be something in game, a house, a car, even an island, that will cost a huge amount of money, like $100 million? 
one hundred million dollars. Doctor Evil Powers yeah, or Mr. Yeah, Powers. Yeah, or Doctor whatever. Evil yeah. bent pinky finger. Yeah, I mean almost certainly. And, and Rockstar have said from the start that there, there's going to be an active and vibrant economy within GTA five and lots of way to spend your hard earned cash. Mm. You know, Rockstar look at the real world, they look at kind of the consumerist aesthetic culture sort of around literally the real world around hip hop. They know that people want to buy virtual baubles and stuff and they want to be marked out from the crowd. Um, I, I just think that's going to happen and there will be ludicrous like aircraft strip properties mm. maybe some kind of weaponry or clothing there'll be stuff that will mark you out and it's going to happen like real life a ludicrous price they'll be the equivalent of I guess like you know the Virtu phone like your gold plated phone that yeah. can be you know aircraft recovered or whatever it is in real yeah. life be, there'll be mad stuff like that uh, and I guess sort of what he's asking as well is, I mean, do you think there'll be stuff kind of because we know we know Rockstar like um, building a sort of mythology around their games, and they the whole we talked in the previous episodes about the Sasquatch and the fun yeah. of kind of trying to find that, and also we talked about mythological creatures and that sort of stuff. I mean, do you think that there'll be something hidden away in the game that costs an extortionate amount of money, but th- that is you know, there to be found, and when you find it, it sort of changes the game in some big and interesting way. That that seems like a very sort of rock star thing to do. I think they'll. It's possible they'll be the equivalent of like GTA San Andreas's jetpack. I think there will be something where that came as a massive curveball in San Andreas, yeah. where you suddenly went, "Oh, I've been living out this sort of gritty story from the streets, and now like I'm jetpacking into the <laughs> grove with twin oozies." <laughs> Like, you know, as a fat man, it was like all these things where you went, the game's falling apart. And it was almost in that moment was born the entire Saints Row series, really. Yeah. They've sort of gone off and run with it. GTA kind of went back to its core and was quite serious with GTA 4. But I think we're going to see a bit more middle ground in GTA 5, where essentially it's like a serious, authentic experience, but pushed to the max and as mad as reality can be. And I think we are going to see nods to... Uh, you know the apocryphal sort of uh, Bigfoot hunt in GTA San Andreas yeah. we've already seen that with the um, Los Santos Police Department motif yeah. on the first trailer with the little Bigfoot in the corner which again hasn't been shown since almost like they showed too much so I'd expect there definitely to be a Bigfoot particularly up in the mountains you've got Mount Chiliad all those areas there's a lot Rockstar haven't shown more than that like we were talking off air Underwater is a big deal in GTA, and I think Rockstar, every time we speak to them, are really reinforcing that they think people are really going to like underwater. Mm-hmm. Now, if all you can do underwater is explore old shipwrecks and shoot sharks, it, it sounds kind of a bit boring and a bit like other underwater sections in the game, which are a bit means to an end. Mm. So I, I would expect something either like proper true undercave exploration, submarine stuff, uh, maybe even areas where you can like pop your helmet off and breathe. You know, It could be something weird or unique or different and it could even be stuff like we discussed could there be a kraken probably not because that's insane <laughs> kraken <laughs> you know, that'd be awesome unleash the kraken <laughs> that'd be amazing 100 million krakens <laughs> so I, I don't I don't think there'll be that but they could be like a giant squid yeah uh, or something that's just like whoa Captain Nemo at, style yeah look at the size of that you know, almost not, not like Moby Dick but you know something that's really out there like if you can catch him and spot him you can bring in this big old cargo yeah Rockstar love that stuff we love that stuff I would think they'd put that in okay so spinning off from that we, we got a lot of questions this week on Twitter and, and on YouTube about how what do you think will be like the ultimate heist in, in GTA 5 and, and by that I think people mean we know there's like four or five tentpole heists and we know that they can be very uh, you know there's lots of different components that make up those heists and they can be very complicated and, and uh, very uh, uh, tricky to plan and put together. And presumably, we don't know this for a fact, but presumably as you go through the game, each heist, each tempo horse will get more difficult. That seems logical. Yeah. So by the time you get to the end, what do you think will be like, you know, an ul- the ultimate heist? And, and obviously we don't know, but but in terms of scale and ambition, and w- w- what's your sort of feeling on that? Well, there's a couple of indicators. I mean, few things we know about the heist that are definitely in there like one is kind of the dual heist which almost seems to be like the entry level heist and we've seen the planning board for that where they're discussing like effectively binary options as in uh, the like loud option which is to go through the front door shooting and it could all go quite messy or the smart option which almost seems to be like the 
you know, the choice between do you want to be clever or an absolute doofus? Mm. Now, like, it, it seems obvious that you'd want to go the clever route, and that seems to involve things like rigging the CCTV, going in through the vents, a stealthy approach. You know, that seems, though, again, quite straightforward, really. It's quite a straightforward stealth approach. If you look at, again, another heist we sort of seem to know to be true is the Polito heist based on the sort of uh, industrial manufacturing town on the mm. north coast as we previously mapped in other episodes. We see again uh, what looks like Franklin skydiving into that location. So again, that shows like the ante is being upped in that mission in terms of your stealthy approach and entry to it. And you can even see, I think they've marked out points on the coast where you can enter by boat as well. Mm. So whether it's like a multi, you approach from different angles all yeah. at once. It sounds complex. Now, if you keep ramping that up and, and you think again that Michael, who's kind of like the heist leader, he's got experience, he's done bank jobs before. He's obsessed with 80s action movies, and we see him in various trailers drinking his whiskey and, you know, imagining himself to be, you know, Bruce Willis mm. or whoever it is from all the great heist movies. And again, we've talked on the show about the great heist movies, and we've talked about, um, like, you know, Heat and the scene from that and the Three Leaf Clover Link. We've talked about um, one of the Dark Knights. Is it the Dark Knight? Dark Knight, Point Break, yeah. Point Break is another great one. Um, and perhaps, you know, the ultimate heist movie, and this would be the ultimate source of inspiration, would be Die Hard. Yeah. Um, and you talk about the, the the solar skyscraper and the attempt to, like, cleanse or reclaim an entire skyscraper. Like, what an achievement that mm. would be. And that, again, is what Die Hard is. It's the Nakatomi Plaza. In real life, like, the Nakatomi Plaza or whatever it's called is actually in L.A. I think it's a, is it the Sony Pictures building or something, I think. I don't know. I so think so, yeah. Yeah, and um, but yeah, we know I've driven past it in real life, LA, and you know you see it. And it's oh, great. Fox, no Fox, yeah. Fox, it is, yeah. There's Nakatomi Plaza. Yeah. It's brilliant. So, like, given that the game's set in Los Santos, there's a geographical sense mm. to that. Now, you know, I would think that a a multi-stage, multi-planning heist combining the best of everything you've learnt so far at the end would make sense. And yeah. with something like Nakatomi Plaza, it might be, you know. Like in the film, where, where they break in, you know, they, they they steal access to the security, they're going through the vents, they're unlocking a vault. We've they're seen, the again, yeah. we've seen in a previous trailer, the guys blowing the doors off a vault. Mm. Now, you know, is that similar to a Die Hard style vault? I, I don't know, you know, but mm. you've got to join the dots and you think, well, out of that building, he's got scope for uh, helicopter approaches and aircraft. Uh, you could skydive off that building. There's all sorts of things that would really work for the framework of a really daring multi-point heist. Mm. And again, you know, the, the basic heist we've seen might be a couple of steps. It could be that the top end heists involve like, let's say 15 to 20, you know, really intricate planning steps and missions yeah. before it lead to that. And you've got to recruit the right equipment to be part of that. Yeah. Okay, uh, you touched on it actually in that last uh, answer, Dan, but uh, you talked about the sm going in the smart way or going in the loud way, which yeah. they also reference in the gameplay trailer. Uh, the Casual Gamer 2013 says, do you think you'll get more money if you do it the smart way? Because his point is that if you do it the loud way, you're gonna the cops are going to be on to you, they're going to be arriving a lot quicker, it's going to be a real smash and grab, whereas if you do it the smart way, you can take your time a bit more and... Yeah, it's quite possible. Again, I don't know this as fact, but you look when they're uh, swooping up the jewels from the jewel heist, and every time they swoop a little cachet of jewels, it's like $100,000. Yeah. Now, it might be that if you're doing that under incredible time pressure or whilst being shot at, you, you're able to be less methodical and sweep everything up. I think that the biggest risk-reward for you will be the ability to actually finish the mission because you're not being shot to pieces versus... You know, I, I don't know, you know, quite how it will affect the time pressure is what I'm saying. But mm. I think that definitely, if you do it the loud way, you're taking a much bigger risk. Mm. Where the alternative is to do it the smart way, and the, and it loops back to what we know of the game's recruitment structure, where you recruit people for heists. Like, there will be an incentive to recruit clever people to make the heist go smooth. Mm. Unless you say perhaps the payoff for that is that you can make it more lucrative. Yeah, it'd be funny if you did like a loud mission, it all went wrong, and all the money blew up. Yeah. Well, I don't know how funny it would be at the time, but be pretty unfunny. Yeah, <laughs> Stephen Watts says, uh, "If I get a wanted level and I'm being chased, will I be able to switch out of one character into another? And if so, will the character with the wanted level continue to run from the cops until he escapes?" Yeah, good question. Um, I don't know if we answered this on a previous show, and you forgive my oversight here. I think that uh, you can't you can't use it as a cheat. I don't think no. just to get out of a scenario. Can you remember exactly what we were told on it? No, I I seem to recall, and I could be recalling this wrong, but isn't it once you've got a wanted level, haven't you got to lose the cops before you can swap out of the character? Yeah. So I, you've got to get rid of your wanted level before you can swap out of the character. 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak out of turn. No, so I don't either. I think it's one that we, we would look into. I mean, what I can talk about more is the ability to shake a wanted level. And I think there will be like, obviously, the wanted level scales up to number five. Uh, when you activate a wanted level, the police cars develop like like what like little radar cones of detection mm. that you can see on the radar. And like if you you know you you break you need to break away from their vision effectively or their radar thing and stay in hiding for the alert phase to wind down. It's not yeah. like a sort of Metal Gear Solid style approach to stealth really, but so you could like yeah if you burn away in your fast car and then hide under a bridge that could be a good way to lose the stealth. Mm. What we do know is that there are actually other ways to affect your wanted level that, well, possibly the Rockstar aren't talking about yet, but we'll have more on that soon. Okay. Danny Johnson says, will there be seasons? Seasons? Like salt and pepper? and no, I'm Yeah, like yeah. seasoning, yeah. like yeah. rosemary and that? No, yeah. like winter, spring, autumn, summer? Um, no, not confirmed, but we do know there's a dynamic weather system and Rockstar are very proud of it. We've seen storms, like we've seen lightning, we've seen choppy waves, we've seen, um, you know, there, there will be incidences where I think the weather will affect the gameplay hmm. and in terms of seasons again we previously speculated that you, you know your phone will almost act like a diary and be able to so you can tick off dates and whether it scores as far as as months um, and you know that does affect seasons uh, I don't know but I wouldn't rule it out particularly if again a device Rockstar I've used in previous games is that sort of you know dramatic scene big moment happens cut five years later blah yeah. I wouldn't rule out seeing the city, you know, in a different light or in a different way. I guess the only thing to remember is that Los Santos is based on on Los Angeles, and they don't get like biting winters there and and that kind of thing. Although, you know, if you get if they did do seasons and it was winter in Los Santos, it would probably be, you know, ten, twelve, fifteen degrees, or whatever, during the day. But if you go up into the mountains, that's going to be pretty chilly up there, and you'll probably get some snow up there. If they do do it, yeah. Even if it's not entirely realistic, I think they, they they treat sort of Los Santos like a capsule environment, and it might be you could go up Mount Chiliad at a certain time, and there would be snow. You know, I, we don't know that. that. That's again speculation. But yeah, the weather will play a big role in the game. Okay, uh, Bilto one two three four five Dan wants to uh, add something to your um, your spe- your sort of theory about about GTA Online. He says uh, just some speculation on my part. You mentioned that the progress bars above the Rockstar employees. Was likely to do with a ranking system of how useful a player is. My guess would instead would be uh, would be that it's a faction system with half a bar meaning neutrality with your faction, a full bar meaning allied, and an empty meaning rival. It ties into the whole cruise thing they're pushing. Would explain why each and every bar is at half and makes sense as a way of quickly being able to tell who's on your team and who isn't. What do you think about that? I think it's a fun theory, um, and I think. Probably quite soon, we'll be able to find out who's right. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, last question, Dan. Lots of people asking, why even have internet cafes if you can do everything on your phone? I don't know. Like, why read a newspaper when you got the internet? I just think, you know, it's... There's, there's I'm a bit resigned there, Dan. I know, I know, but what I'm saying, you know, there, there might be reasons for, for this to appear in the game. It might be a legacy thing. I don't think the game is going to consistently force you to go to internet cafes when you've got a smartphone. It just wouldn't be realistic. Okay. Uh, it's like, like reality again. There are still internet cafes. Yeah. Usually full of backpackers. Yeah. Okay. Pretty definitive on the internet cafes front, Dan. Uh, thanks for listening this week. Before we go, Dan, we just have one last message. Yeah. Well, well the big thing is the reason this week's episode is so short is because we've got, and we're super excited about this, we've got a special episode lined up for YouTube's uh, Geek Week, which is like their big uh, promotion week for all things sort of sci-fi, gaming, smart, science It's all happening this week. If you go on YouTube, you will not miss it. It's on the front page, particularly in the UK. Now, you know, brilliantly, we're linking up as part of that and producing a special one-off episode of GTA 5 O'Clock that you will be able to find. Uh, and I would, again, suggest you follow us at GTA V O'Clock on Twitter or check the Computer and Video Games homepage or just check back on YouTube on our channel on CBG. In fact, the smartest thing to do would be, if you don't already, subscribe to the show. You will not miss a beat. Okay, thanks for that, Dan. Thank you all for listening. We hope you've enjoyed it. See you again soon. Bye.